Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and I spend far too much time reading random Wikipedia pages and Quora articles about things that you're probably never gonna care about, but I figured today I would try and share one of those things with you, because something that's always perplexed me as a European, someone who lives in the UK, but who goes to the United States, is that over here, it's just a given that when you pull out money, it's usually free, unless you're at a dodgy ATM at a club or a bar or something, or maybe a convenience store where it'll charge you a bit of money for that. However, in other countries, namely the United States, States of America, it's pretty common to charge a ton. In fact, you can see that the average out-of-network ATF MV is $4.72. So it's just weird to me that it's just a culture difference that in America you pay money to part your money, but over here you don't. And clearly superior European culture, right, is the easy answer. And then as I learn more about it, I speak to Americans. A lot of Americans with better bank accounts get those fees refunded, so it's not really a fee for everyone, it's a fee for the poor. And then you learn more and more and more and more about like, oh, well, America actually has 4,983 unique banks. They have so many tiny banks in America that is a different system to the UK where we've centralized to like 10. And so actually the reason their ATM fees is like something, something pushing the cost of banking onto the poor. And it's uh, one of those continuous stories, but it's actually far more interesting than that in my opinion. And let's read the ATM usage fees Wikipedia page to find out. Let's Let's learn about ATM, shall we? Which, if you don't know, is an automated teller machine. Yeah, learning learning facts right here. So, um, ATMs, uh, just to... We'll go through the two um, pages that matter here, for what it's worth. In most European countries, it is free for anyone who uses a... Honestly, it's usually weird cards, like a Maestro card, which you, are not very common outside of <laughs> uh, Europe, as best I can tell. I My very first ever debit card was a Maestro, and then after that, it switched to being MasterCard. I don't know fully what the difference is, but it seems as though they're like debit cards, but then something else. Do you know what should we read about this, actually? Actually, let's let's find out. Are there Maestro cards in the UK? Uh, outside? No, they're not anymore. There we go. A former Switch debit card system was rebranded as Maestro. Underneath the branding, it was a Switch one. See, I never had a Maestro card. I had a Switch card <laughs> branded that way. But then MasterCard aligned UK domestic Maestro cards with the standard international Maestro system, ending its status as a separate card scheme. The change led to the discontinuation of the solo debit card, and then blah, 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 Visa debit. And actually, I have a Visa debit card. Wow. You know, isn't this cool? I'm learning about why my first card was a Maestro, and why my second and every card since then has been a Visa debit. That is, and I, I have a debit master card now, what it's worth too. But anyway, um, <laughs> this is this is what I do. This is how I browse Wikipedia. I've just, you know, it's th this is this is the problem with everything you research. Anyway, so as you can see, in Austria, cash withdrawals are free, except for 67 out of 8,500 ATMs in the country, where they charge about one euro and 95 cents. They discussed whether they should just ban these altogether because they're so rare and like outlandish but they, it seems as though they didn't, and very few small banks charge an extra fee when one of their own customers uses a different bank's ATM. Again, it's not a popular policy. Imagine being in a country where it's free to withdraw cash and then your bank tries to be the one that doesn't do it. Supposedly, um, if you read into most of these, as you can see, Finland, cash withdrawals are free if anyone has a Finnish bank card or Visa Electron card, branded Otto, and uh, as you can see, it's there There are small arrivals which have fees, but they're not really a big thing. Same with Ireland, same with uh, the Netherlands, it seems, where you can, by the way, uh, I believe the Netherlands is pretty big on cash. You can withdraw up to 2,300 euros, <laughs> which is kind of nutty if you ask me. Um, and uh, so yeah, I, I, I've heard from people at the Netherlands that that's a, a cool little feature. No ATM surcharges in Norway. And if we go to the UK uh, specifically, in the 1980s, cut, you know, like uh, banks, actually started trying issuer fees, i.e. charging fees to their own customers when they used another operator's cash machine. And uh, the reason they do this, in case you're curious, is because the system that actually works for the ATM is when you put your card in, you know, you pull out some cash, and the ATM operator, who has to fill up the machine, operate this giant electronic box that does use electricity, um, charges the bank a small fee, I, I think in the UK it's uh, 95 pence or something, um, but they charge a small fee to the operator, and so effectively what the bank was doing, uh, which which bank was it? Barclays. Uh, what Barclays was trying to do is they were trying to make you as a non-Barclays uh, customer, uh, sorry, make you as a Barclays customer, pay for the fees that they were being charged by other banks, which actually sounds pretty reasonable if you kind of think about it, except when you talk about fees 
that are, you know, like machines that already have a fee, so you'd be charged by your card issuer, Barclays, but also by the machine operator. And public reaction against this was very strong, and a campaign lost, launched by Nationwide Building Society and the UK tabloid newspapers resulted in issuer fees being removed altogether. Should we go down a little tangent? Who's going to stop me? I've heard, I haven't confirmed until we go down a Wikipedia rabbit hole, that Nationwide used to be a building society, but now it's actually a bank. But, I mean, apparently it's not, right? Apparently it's still the largest building society in the world. But when your building society does become a bank, you cash in real big. And so, as a fun fact, if you live in the UK, um, I'm not with Nationwide. I went in to um, go get a mortgage of them once, um, like, you know, set up some banking. And they just, like, laughed at me when I said I was self-employed. Like, oh, 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 we went this far in the mortgage process and you're just now telling me that? Oh, we don't, we don't deal with self-employed people, which is a funny... You know what? Nationwide, you suck. I wanted, I wanted to be a part of your bank so that I could profit greatly when you became a bank. Sorry, a building society. The difference between a building society and a bank is a building society is, uh, it's a mutual organization. It's like owned by the, by the, it's like how a cooperative is owned by the workers to some extent. A building society is owned by the, by the, uh, the, the people who lend the money to the bank effectively. Um, and so yeah, fun, fun fact, the biggest one in the world, that's, that's crazy, honestly, is in the UK. 15 million members. That's like suspiciously big. How is one in every four people in the UK using a nationwide, whatever, going back to the main point. So nationwide as a building society was like, yeah, we're not gonna do this. Look, Barclays sucks everyone. Do you see how bad Barclays sucks? And then it made them stop. And so interchange fees did remain paid by the card issuer to the cash machine operator to cover the cost of the transaction. Again, there, there is a cost to withdrawing money from these things. And like, that's, that's I think one of the lessons from this is like, yeah, to me it seems dumb to pay money to get your money, but it does cost them money to get your money to you in such a convenient place, like right here in the mountains. I totally get that, don't get me wrong. And so the cost is absorbed by the card issuer and the idea being like, yeah, well, you're with a bank and the bank makes money from you other ways. So they can just, they, you know, they can, they can support that for you for free. But this is effectively, uh, you know, it's not that ATMs are free in Europe. ATMs are paid for by the bank in Europe. And uh, we can read about all sorts of other things like, okay, there are machines that charge up to five or 10 pounds, really a 10 pound charge for a cash machine. But they're often in nightclubs, casinos, um, convenience stores, like I mentioned, garages. I'm not sure what type of garage it means there. But it's like, it's there for when you desperately need cash. Uh, they set up the fee and they can make a bit of money that way. Sure, it's a thing. I ha I think the most embarrassing fee I've ever paid was £3.80 um, outside of some nightclub somewhere in London once. And that was the moment where I was like, yeah, this was dumb. I saw the charge the next day and I was like, I paid £23 to withdraw 20 What is the point of life? How have I done this? without ever accepting it. Anyway, so rules regarding, should I make this bigger? I think this makes more sense, right? You want, you can look at this text and big screen, no squinting if you're on a mobile device. Anyway, so um, in the, uh, as you can see, in the 1999, uh, link open membership to so-called independent machine operators. That's how that happened. And so large numbers of free uh, to use cash machines and low number of address transactions mean that 97% of cash withdrawals remain free of charge. And so boom, in the UK, we don't generally pay for cash outside of very specific situations. And uh, this is actually, uh, uh, you know, the European uh, examples right here are generally the exceptions. Um, as you can see, if we look at like, I don't know, um, the Philippines, uh, it's, there's a P200 charge from local banks when using an international ATM as well. Actually, that's just for overseas people. But if you look at like um, Thailand, there's a fee if you use any ATM outside of your province, which is interesting. Like, I, you know, most of the time you hear about like things like this, it's internationally. In the case of Thailand, it's interprovincial. And you don't probably think about the Thailand provinces, but if you're from Thailand, guess you have to. Pakistan, same thing. Sri Lanka, the fee is ludicrously tiny. Five... What is the, the Sri Lankan rupee? I, I should know their currency, really, shouldn't I? Five Sri Lankan rupees if you're from the same bank, and a 15 Sri Lankan rupees if you're, or, sorry, 60 Sri Lankan rupee if you're a bank withdrawal of cash from the machine if you're not from them. So, okay, there's like a little bit of a fee right there. Most countries charge you withdrawals because that's how it works. Switzerland, uh, sorry, uh, Switzerland is uh, one of the exceptions in Europe, charging up to two Swiss francs per withdrawal. Um, but that's obviously just Credit Suisse. UBS does not charge for withdrawals of other banks. Sometimes banks provide the cardholder with 10, 12, or 24 free withdrawals, which I think is actually the much more logical way to do this. You know, like with most things, there's the US example where we go full on rage the capitalism beast until 
uh, things break. You got the European example where you're like, ah, I think everything should be free. We should work it out. Uh, we should not work out the cost of this immediately. I don't know what European accent this is, but I guess I'm sticking with it. Um, but like, uh, the first example is like that nice balance of like, okay, people want free ATM access, but you can't just make it free because someone's paying. Solution, have X number. Make make the you know the person who is using this costly service realize it has a cost, even if not to them. You know, limit their amount like we do with goods and services. Whereas America goes full the other way. And prior to 1988, there was no surcharging of eight card holders by ATM owners in the U.S. And uh, this this was the thing that shocked me. I assumed, but because there was 4,983 banks, that just the way bank ATMs worked was just yeah. Obviously, they're going to charge to use other ATMs, and obviously, banks are going to pass those fees on to their customers because there's so many that it's kind of hard for someone to make a name for themselves. If you've ever spoken to someone from the US and they're not banking with like Wells Fargo or Bank of America or whatever else, they use some weird local bank that no one's ever heard of. And so that bank doesn't really need to market because it's a weird local bank no one's ever heard of. And so, obviously, I, I was shocked to learn that no, actually, in 1988, the first ATM fees were starting to become widespread in the valley of, La, uh, you know, Las Vegas, Nevada, which makes sense. They're casinos. It's the same logic as UK stuff where, yeah, you can make a ton of money and people there are pretty price insensitive. They will ch they will accept a $1.01 as a, as a fee to pull out their $100 that they can gamble because they think they'll turn into $200, which side note, it is the most depressing thing in the world. I have a friend who pulled out money from a, a Vegas ATM and he did it like rather than pulling out a lot of money at once he kept pulling out in increments of 50 and the fee each time was like $12 because it's like $7 from the machine and $5 from his bank and it was like please please stop paying $12 to withdraw 50 if you know gambling is already a losing proposition if you don't do this anyway um foreign ATM fees average $1.01 nationally according to a 2001 report from the US based state public interest research group and as banks as and third parties realize the profit potential they raise the fees atm fees now commonly reach three dollars and can be as high as six i i've never seen an atm with three dollar uh fees um i'll admit like i i i feel like actually you know now that i think about it i i don't know what the atm fees are in america because they like my card just gets charged internationally i think um i I, I'm actually, you know, this this is a fun thing. Or even higher in cash intensive places, it gets as high as eleven dollars for some people. I, again, I, I am I I am ninety nine percent sure I saw my friend pay twelve dollars at one point. So just saying, it goes even higher if you're from <laughs> if you're from overseas. And uh, yeah, according to this, they earned one point one billion from ATM fees. Average fee is four dollars fifty seven, four seventy two. And yeah, what? Why do ATMs charge money in America? because they can make money from it. And that's a cynical view at first, but it's true. And then the answer is like, well, is that a good thing? Well, I mean, they make $1.1 billion from these fees that they can then do other things with. You know, admittedly, do you want JP Morgan Chase or Bank of America or Wells Fargo? Wow, I named two of the three big American banks, huh? Um, but like, I, uh, you know, like, um, do you want, do you, do you trust these companies to do great things with your money? Should we find out what Wells Fargo does? Let's find out, shall we? Environmental record. Ooh, they're, 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 they've got the greenest of the 500 largest companies. I might have picked a bad example right here. Ooh, good good job, Wells Fargo. Proud of you. Um, but yeah, uh, they've got a history museum. I, I feel like I've seen this exact stagecoach in London. I've seen a Wells Fargo... You know what? Is this, is this the same one? One sec. You know what? We have to, we have to go find out right now. Where is it? Where is it chillin'? Is it? Uh, oh, I guess we can't find out. I, I, I walk. It's like it's on a, it's on a major street and bank. I want to say on London Bridge, and maybe it's not the original one, but I swear, I, there's, I see it all the time. I feel like whatever. Yeah, um, <laughs> staying on track. <laughs> see, this is, this is like I can do this for hours at a time, and then I'm just like, why did I need to learn that Wells Fargo is the greenest major company uh, in America? And, you know, one day there'll be a conversation where that comes in useful. Anyway, so the average fee for an out of network fee is 457 There's also denial fees. And the real question here, the real interesting thing, because by the way, I read into this, and is it charged? In, in the UK, we also don't have, oh, damn it, I can't release this video now. I fucking hate Quora. I'm so fucking upset with the concept of every website being like, would you like to sign over your Google account? No, I wouldn't like to. Why? 
Why, 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 why do you assume I want to sign in by default? I'm here browsing. I'll hit the fucking sign in button when I want to log into an account because that's what, that's what the button's there for. Do you think I don't see it? Do you think I'm not? Whatever. Anyway, um, <laughs> so anyway, my point here is that, um, the, the real question that you're going to be questioning is like, okay, is it a good thing for banks to be making more money? Generally, banks are one of the big targets in society for they do, we don't see them as being good sources of profit. I mean, sure, if a company like, um, we're on a banking page, that's so gonna be hard to find. But if a company like, how do we find a company people like on a banking page? Tabloid newspapers? No. Oh, what's, what's that? What, who, who do we want to have money? Um, there's definitely some company out there where you're like, yeah, they could do good things with their money if they made more of it. You know, maybe IBX Toycat LLC. Maybe, maybe the, you know, wait, actually, you know what? Yeah, IBX Toycat LLC. Uh, Toycat, yeah, look, you can give it directly to me. Look at this. $202 per month. Yeah, your boy's rolling it. All that money's going straight on lobster rolls. Anyway, um, <laughs> long story short, what I was trying to say with this video. Somewhere down the line um, was that the, uh, the the European banking model does make less money and banks aren't hugely happy about it. Um, banks would prefer to charge fees for your account and to charge fees for your thing. Ultimately, you know, like with, like with most industries, if they can make their money elsewhere, they will. Um, as an example, um, the, the way um, that credit cards in America have better rewards than they do in the UK. It is amazing the amount of free stuff you can get for signing up for a credit card because banks have huge amounts of money to throw at that. Whereas in the UK, the, the credit card is the money maker. Every bank is super stingy about it. And so the overall rewards are less. In effect, you can make an argument because, you know, banking is, is similar revenues for the businesses is like, okay, in the, in, in the UK, um, we don't pay ATM fees and we don't pay account fees and in exchange, we don't get these mega rewards for, you know, again, uh, like, like if, if you're not familiar with Chase Bank, they have one of the most rewarding cards in the world. In fact, let's, 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 uh, let's get, let's look at Chase. Is it a separate component in here? Wait, Chase, JP Morgan Chase was founded by Aaron Burr. Now that's a wacky fact, huh? Man, it's crazy. It's crazy how much like, uh, some of the early American founders did, right? They were, they're busy like founding a country and then also one of the, I, I would have assumed that JP Morgan was founded by JP Morgan. Oh, it, the Bank of the Manhattan Company eventually became JP Morgan, which then found, which merged with Chase National Bank. And you know what? This is, this is wacky, huh? Anyway, speaking of things that are wacky, hope you all enjoyed this video. Don't know what it was. Sorry for putting you through it. Bye.